Well, good day, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Just for the Record. I am your host, Kamal Haynes. And today we have joining us in studio a very special guest. He is the leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition, Honorable Ronnie Skelton. We get to all the details of his first 100 days in office right after this quick commercial break. At Higher BVI, we're not just about business. We're about empowering lives, and that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Higher BVI, where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. Welcome back, viewers. As mentioned prior to the break, I have with me in the studio, Honorable Ronnie Skelton, leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Honorable Skelton, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kamala. It's good to be here again. I, I guess during the conversation, I will not allow you to take me where you want to take me, but I will try to give you as much and give the public as much information as I possibly can. Okay, I do appreciate it. Yeah. Um, firstly, I want to speak, um, as you do know, the topic is the first 100 days in office. Yeah. Um, how has your first 100 days in office been so far? I, I would say it, it, it has been quiet. Um, basically, we could have accomplished a lot more. Some of the committees that uh, were supposed to be formed, they, just, they were recently formed just yesterday. The most important one, which is PAC, which they, it's to basically examine government policies, programs, and spending. And it's an it's a organ of the Constitution. And it's, it's one of those committees that basically have a check and balance on what government does. But unfortunately, it wasn't, it wasn't um, approved yesterday. The Premier says that he will bring it back as soon as possible. You know, based on the last five months, it takes five months for us to form the committees. So I hope it won't take five months for him to bring it back. You know. yeah. And the committee is really nominated by the speaker. But because of how the, the parliament is set up, the resolution must be moved by, by a minister or a member. And most of the time, it's 99% of the time is done by the premier. Yeah. Okay, so uh, and as it relates to, you know, you know, you are an at-large representative as well. What have you been doing in the community over these last couple of months? Well, just basically, you know, listening to people's concerns. Um, it is true in the past we had, we had resources, both um, financial and other ways, where we could have helped, directly helped people. But because of the COI report, those resources financial side of it was taken away and you have to go through a long system to, to get people the assistance they need. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt, you know, you live in a society, there are a lot of people out there who are hurting, you know. We went through um, the hurricanes, the floods, the, the, um, the COVID, where the country was shut down, people lost their jobs, um, people got behind in their rental payments. People got behind in their mortgage payments. And on top of that, the, the cost of living has increased on everybody. Um, but the people who feel it the most is the, is the people on the, on the lower end of the spectrum. That is, it doesn't say that everybody's not feeling it. So we, we constantly, and we will continue to urge the government to set up systems, more efficient systems, to get help to the people because whether we want to be living with another society that is boasting all of the revenues and the resources that we have to have people out there who can't buy food, kids going to school hungry and those kind of stuff, we can't allow that to happen, even if it's a small portion. And, to, and based on the all observation that is the opposition, in the districts, there's, a, there's quite a bit of people who needs who needs real assistance. Now, it stems from 
quite a number of factors. We had hurricanes, the insurance companies carry up their rates, sometimes quadruple their rates. And so let's say apartment, people who own apartments. So if you you were paying ten thousand dollars for insurance and now it's forty thousand, that costs most to the to the, the renters, and that becomes a burden on the renters because the renters the, their disposable income can't support the increase in in the rent that the the owner has to he has no choice or she has no choice but to charge. Mm -hmm. So you have people, um, as some of my colleagues say. Who lives in cares because they've lost the, the rental accommodation. So we have quite a lot of uh, uh, quite a number of issues, and they stem from all the disasters we have. We had, and based on the hurricane season that we 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 are witnessing, and the disasters along the globe, it doesn't seem it's going to get any better. Mm -hmm. But we, as a people, we are small enough. We are, we are, um, we are nimble enough that we can do things to help our people, you know. And if we don't, we're just going to have a lot of social ills. And we can't afford to have it, you know. Every society will have social ills. Mm -hmm. But we cannot afford for us to, to cycle back into, into that position. You know, when I was a little boy growing up here, you know, we didn't know we were poor because we are poor. But, <laughs> but that's the nature of it. Now, because of uh, whatever happened, our forefathers, whatever they did to allow us to, to be in the position we are at now, we have an obligation to make sure that we don't lose that, that position, and pass it on. You know? So... The government who is responsible for all of these policies and programs, they're the ones who really have, they have the handle of all, for all of these things. And we will continue to, to press them to, to use whatever resources that, are, that is available for us to help our people, mm -hmm. you know. It's just not individual people, businesses are hurting. You know, we all know that we all know that we, the, during the COVID, we had to lock the country down. It was no fault of government, but because of the pandemic, we, in order to protect lives and lives you we had to. I can't give any government wrong for doing that. If I was in the position, I probably, I would have done the same. We'll be right back with more Just For The Record after this short break. Is business slow, cash flow down, hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works. We now return with more Just for the Record. But, you know, businesses have lost. lost so, you know, especially those in the tourism sector. Can't pay their mortgages. Can't pay their insurance. So we have, we have major issues from the districts all the way to the national level. I'm not saying that you, once, you, once you are liable on this or you will have problems, but how we go about dealing with these problems is what I am concerned about. Mm -hmm. And I know this is not your first rodeo as it pertains to being an opposition leader or being in the opposition. Um, I uh, want to you to, to do somewhat of a comparison. I know you would have said, you know, the first 100 days this term have been slow, you know, based on your standards as well as um, the public well, comments my, my, my first time, I wasn't there for 100 days. Mm -hmm. It was a very short stint, you know. So it was not the last, yes, not the last government, the government before. Mm -hmm. It was a very short, when I left the government and went on the opposition. Mm -hmm. So it was a small stint. I did a little bit of work where you, because the leader of the opposition, as I mentioned to you earlier, 
has, you know, some constitutional responsibilities. It also have some legal responsibilities in laws where the government must consult the leader of the opposition on certain issues. Mm -hmm. So during that st short stand, they was able to do some of that also. And now, you know, there are quite a, a number of appointments that were sent to me as leader of the opposition for recommendation as mem for members and, and for consultation. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I know during our last speaking prior to the election when we were campaigning, uh, you would have been speaking about, you know, what would happen should you be elected, etc. I know you were speaking about a situation report. I know, um, obviously, as opposition, you probably would have still had plans in place. Um, what, what have you done as it relates to such? Yeah, a situation report is one of the, one of the functions of the opposition is to ask a lot of questions. So, one of the situation reports that we asked for, and members have asked the questions, answers to the questions, um, we, we did not get them when we were supposed to get them, but we got some of the answers. Mm -hmm. So, we now have to see it and, co and correlate and see exactly. For example, the financial, I, I think I mentioned this when I, before the campaign, we need a, a, a financial situation report. What who we owe, how much money we owe, how much money we have, what our obligations are. You know, we ask that question and that information is still trickling in. So hopefully um, when all, all is probably within the next week or two, mm -hmm. and all the information will be sitting and look at it as, as an opposition and see what the next levels of question we must ask to get the information we need to give to the people. Because mm -hmm. we, ask, we ask questions on behalf of the people. Mm -hmm. And we do know the power of the people when they come together. Uh, hence why the opposition is so essential um, for the running of the country. Um, a great example of such would have been uh, the Retirement Allowances Act. You know, in, during the campaign, you guys would have highlighted some of the issues and some of the concerns. Uh, fast forward to recently, um, the second re uh, reading would have uh, occurred, the debate would have happened in the House and uh, the, amend the, the move to rescind the amendment would have started. Um, I want you to speak about that too because some people believe that once you're in the opposition you have no power, but with the, with the, as it relates to the power of the people combined with that of the opposition, there's real change. There, there, there's real change that can happen with the, with the people because if, we, if the people put the, put the pressure on the government and the opposition does the same on behalf of the people, then change will happen. There's no if not but about it. Um, you, you mentioned the, the bill that um, the Return Allowance Legislative Services Act amendment that was done in 20, 2021. Uh, it was approved yesterday. The bill came to the House to what I, what I will refer to as the greedy part of the bill, where if you serve a term, you, got, you get you get two years salary plus you get a gratuity um, under the old bill, which kept 139. And if you saw three, three or four terms, you get three years salary. If you saw four or five, five or more terms, you get four years salary, no stuff. So you, 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 when you do the calculations, you have members who three quarter of a million dollars, a million dollars. That's not what we run for political office for. Uh, I will s say to you that ele um, elected officials need to be paid a decent salary. That I totally agree to. And I, when I was in part of the Dr. Smith's government, we argued a point uh, often, but the time, the time never came for us to do it. Uh, we was closest in 2016 to get something done. We, we appointed a committee, uh, Chairman um, Dr. Court out of Antigua to do the study, but shortly after that, the hurricane came, came and the report was never submitted according to information I received from Dr. Court. But yesterday, we, we basically take away the greedy part of it. So those of us who are in the Fifth House of Assembly will not be entitled. Those of us who just got it, not those who were in the fourth house. Mm. So there is a difference. There are still those who have, who have rights 
that I can take away or that the house can take away. Because once you, somebody has a right, it, it, it takes a, you know, treason or something of that magnitude to take those rights away from those people. Yeah. So we still have those members who serve in the full house who are entitled to those provisions. Yeah. And I do know that part of um, the, the new amendment too is that the while well, you can't take away that right, um, the respective member can put in writing yes, yes. that they refuse to receive such benefits. How effective do you think this will be? Uh, um, you know, I asked the question in the committee stage of the House, if I write in to say that I don't want this stuff any, anymore, right? Can I not write in after and say I need it, I want it? So that was subject to a legal interpretation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the legal minds say to, for beyond a, a reasonable doubt, let's put it in such, such notification will be final. But that was not put in the document. Mm -hmm. No one agreed to it. You know, we, it wasn't agreed to. Mm -hmm. But so therefore, those members who are in the fourth house of assembly uh, and, and uh, who are entitled to that under the law, they are still entitled to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want to sort of narrow down on some of the issues in particular. I do know you have um, uh, experience too when it comes to the electricity sector. Uh, we do know recently in the territory we've been having a number of issues when it comes to power outage in areas almost to the point where it's becoming almost every day now. Where, where at least one aspect of the, the respective communities are experiencing yeah, outages. Um, what do you think needs to be done to help address these issues and what can you do from the opposition to help push to have these issues rectified? One of the things that, um, there's no doubt that uh, I, have, I have some experience. I, I was the general manager for the corporation for a number of years. Um, we went through many hurricanes, we built the system, we, we started with one power station in Longboat, we built one down in Parkwood Pond. We had one, two cables going to Virgin Garda. We, we increased that to three. We electrified Jocelyn Dykes and, and Thatch Island, uh, Little Thatch. And, you know, so during that time, uh, we were doing quite a lot of work to make sure anyone who wanted power were able to get it. Um, but every organization goes through some cycles. It is true that no one wants their power off. You know, some of, some of us, we come from places where power has never been, never been taken away. But if you understand the world distribution system, like I, like I have studied over many years, there will always be power outages, sometimes too many, too many for one sector. So the people who are working at the power system must be able to understand those kind of things and try not to take off it. So if this sector goes off for say, maintenance, then to come back the following day or the following day, we can take it off again. It's not the right thing, so you need to plan properly. It is true that they, I understand from the last major outage that we had, where they basically had to shut down the power system um, due to seaweed in, intake into the um, water system. I, I don't know, you know, over the years, you know, with, with um, strategic, basically thinking, you know, we have seaweed, it, ju it was just, uh, seaweed became what? The, the Sargassum seaweed became like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, we, 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 whoever the water intake systems, uh, power system intake systems from the ocean need to understand at some point that this seaweed could cause a problem to the intake system mm -hmm. and do, do things ahead of that. But that wasn't done, that's history. You know, my engineering thing. <laughs> Training tells me uh, once it happened, my question is to fix it. And I, I showed the people who were there, they have corrected that situation. So the seaweed issue will not be an issue. You know, it is true that we put all the eggs in one basket. We built one, one power station on the western end of the island. 
you know, that's not a good thing for a standalone power system like us. We'll be right back with more Just for the Record after this short break. Mm. Is that my lunch? Mm? Is that my lunch? Mm -mm. We're like the co-worker that doesn't eat your lunch. I'm John. I'm John. CG Insurance. Good like that. We now return with more Just for the Record. If we had linkage, linkage to some other place, some other island, where there's excess power, that when there's something happens here that you can buy power from some places like they do in America. So uh, even in some of the, um, the European countries, so they have interconnected power system that helps them to do that. But we don't have that, so we have to live with what we have. So that whoever is you know, the manager, the, the board, the technical people at the corporation need to understand that we need to get the power system as stable as possible, you know, all, with all of this heat. Mm -hmm. You know, I show you, you, you understand what, what happened. You had a, a we had a, a, a high pressure thing in the Caribbean that created a, a place where no, Air, no moisture could get get in, so the temperature basically is higher than normal. But I understand it's moving away, so you, you need more air condition, mm -hmm. more demand on the power system, and whether or not the demand for air conditioning and all those things was was excessive, that the power system couldn't carry it, so they had to do load shedding. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I have to. Uh, to, and I will probably, I will ask my colleagues, have a sit down with the electricity to find out what are the issues, how we can help them. And I, you know, we'll do, it, we'll do this for many, many of the organizations, mm -hmm. how we can help them to, to get what they want to get stable power system, power system, stable water supply. You know, yesterday we mentioned like the water system. You know, if, if we are losing, we we spending twenty two million for water and we only collecting five, and we have to pay for it whether we use it or not. Then, if if the problem is distribution, it's a problem, and it has been a problem over many years. So I can't just blame this government. I I am a, I try to be as fair as possible. I don't try to rewrite history. You know, I think history is important and people should not try to rewrite it, you know, because it started way back in, in the Virgin Islands Party government of 2003, something back there, early, early 2000, mm -hmm. where they bought and buy water. So the distribution system was not ready for the water. But over those years, we should have been able to correct it. But now we have a government and they need to get on with it because if that was my business, you know, losing $15 million for, for a loan of 5 or $10 million is, is a no-brainer mm -hmm. because you're going to make it back in no time. Probably in, you can probably pay for it in one year after the job is finished mm -hmm. just by collecting the revenue. So... We will we will push the government to to get what what is needed to do those things because it's in all of our interests, not because we are opposition. It's in the country's interest so that money that can go into schools, healthcare systems. You know, the, the teachers who had a sit up, sit, a, what a sit up because the classroom was too hot, the fans are blowing hot here. You know, it's. If you're blowing hot air in a place, it does make a difference, really, mm -hmm. especially if you're active. So those, those resources can go into the schools and the, and the healthcare system and infrastructure of the, of the country. Mm -hmm. 
and they do not stand in finances coming up soon and i guess this is where you'll be able to post questions to have them responses those responses from the heads on record as well yes 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 uh i i, I know in the past i you know being on the outside i heard stories that um the standing finance was just a rubber stamp but it will not be you know it's so uh, I send in a clear message. I need to understand what are we doing with the resources of the country. Mm -hmm. And I know my colleagues who sit with me who be in the wrong and know, know, the, know the issues. I show they will not want to rubber stamp anything but have some solid, clear policies and programs to, to bring relief to the people in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, um, another big issue in the territory remains the sewage issues that we have, um, especially in town area, yeah. as well as down on the eastern end of the territory and some of the other communities across. Um, how do you in intend on ensuring that government handles uh, this situation? Again, you know, um, the the questions that we were at, that were asked in the house by one of the, my colleagues is uh, the board point sewage system and. The minister for response for the subject says that it should be up in operation um, pretty soon. That was about two weeks ago. So by October, we expect it to be up and running. Once that is done, then the problem that is in Rotong will disappear, should disappear. Because mm. then, you know, the trucks that come to dump sewage right here in the head of Rotong will go straight to Board Point and do what needs to be done. The, 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 the plant was damaged, you know, the Smith administration, which I was a part of, commissioned that plant and it was working. Um, the hurricanes came in and the waves flooded and destroyed, you know, salt water and electrical stuff don't work together. Yeah. So it was the sitting and the minister, the government, um, to get it up and running, then which I commend them for doing, you know. Now, the East End Long Lost Swiss thing is a long process, well, it's been going on a long time. It, again, it's been going on from one government to the other. It's time we bring it to a close. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the plant in Parakeeta Bay, we need to do the collections, pump this, pump the, um, the waste down into have it treated and use the affluent for whatever good purpose we think it can be useful yeah. you know i know in other places you know it's monitored properly it's then it's used for agricultural purposes it, in some places even used for drinking it just have to be monitored properly yeah. and another issue too um is the road infrastructure um you know that people can t continue to, to complain about once you're a motorist obviously you feel uh the pain traversing the territories roadways on a daily basis with so maintenance issues um, obviously plaguing a lot of motors i drive a car a black audi and the paths are not cheap so i understand i understand the burden that that motorists you know in terms of maintenance you have to constantly change suspension shocks something break in the car and it due to potholes and so forth and so on. It is true that the government ministers, because probably they drive government vehicles and they can carry them to public works and, and get them repaired, they probably don't understand some of this stuff. Mm. But I show, I know some of them do. Um, but those of us, especially who drive cars, uh, it's hard on the cars, you know. I see the plant is, the, the asphalt plant is up and running. I, Saturday, I, I saw them patching holes. They have to patch before they can redo. Before they can redo, because I tell my colleagues, you know, we call them patch and go, but I will tell them patch and go for now, mm -hmm. and let us plan the the road, the road redevelopment. You know, because one of the things um, I was the chairman of the RDA for a little a little while, and what. One of the things I told the Premier, and I will continue to tell him, the RDA has the resources, they have the experience now to take on many of these projects and implement them and give you a finished product. 
and they have done many. They have done the high school. They're now doing the police marine base. They've done a lot of schools. They're doing the school in Jasmine Decks. They have um, maintained in government buildings in Washington and all sorts of stuff. I'm sure if they give out the year they have many buildings to put back together, it probably would have been done. Because they they are task oriented, and they go they have a timeline to finish things. Mm-hmm. You know, so I I I think the skill set that they have can help the country to get over a lot of its issues. Mm-hmm. And we do know over time there have been taxes implemented um, to go towards specific projects. So, yeah. um, w- how do you as opposition ensure that the monies are being used? Because oftentimes we do know that money is just sitting in accounts um, for, for several years and then it goes to the consolidated um, fund and then be used for other purposes other than what it was initially intended for. How, how do you ensure that well, these funds are used? I don't think your statement is, is quite correct, you know, that it goes into, if, if, it's, if there's a law that says this fund must be collected, Hmm. It must, the, and the law state that there must be a fund, and it must go into the fund. I understand the point you're making. It can be, it can be mis- redirected. misdirected. Hmm. But once the money is in the fund for a specific purpose, it can only be used for that purpose. So we have the TIF, the transportation and so forth, that we collect from the importation of fuel into the country. I think it's 10% per gallon. Yeah. And we use it for to build road infrastructure, main road infrastructure. And over the years, we have been doing that. And uh, if there's funds there, then it will be used to fix the road. Say, say I, I like to the Seacoast Bay from from the school to to Nanaki. This could need major, major, major work. It's one of the a bad part of the road, and it needs to be corrected. If the TIF, if there's money in the TIF fund to do that role, then we should go and do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's brain surgery. And if RDA can set it up and have it done as quickly as possible, then let's do it. You know, I know we elected officials like to feel like we doing the nuts and bolts, but I think our job is bigger than that. But to to, to while that is being done. To think on what needs to be done and how to go, how to get it done, you know. So it's not sticking on one position, but to get that position moving, and then let us look at how we can develop the country better. Because we need more, we need investment in the country, but we know the road needs fixing. Investment is not going to come unless we have good infrastructure. Mm. So therefore. Let us go attract the investment, but let them, let's give them a, a commitment that these things are being done. And it, be, it could be done through the organs of, of, of governments. Yeah. You know? And um, in terms of, I know when you, was, when you would have been um, sworn in as um, opposition leader, um, prior to that, there was the mentioning of shadow ministers. How has yeah. that project been going? How has that initiative been going so far? Well... <laughs> We'll be right back with more Just For The Record after this short break. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. We now return with more Just For The Record. We still, we, we still talking about it, you know, but we are three political parties. We, we still trying to find areas where we have common, common positions. And it's something that we, we have just tried to institute. So I think we still need some work. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't, I'm not hearing any negative things from none of the members on it. So it's just a matter, I know the questions that we ask seem to be have, have been duplicated. Uh, but the, a lot of them were asked from different perspectives to see if you could get the same response. The same response you know. But 
you know, you exit one way here, it looks like a lawyer's doing court, and then you exit another way over here to see if the response will be the same. Yeah. But the, the shadow, the shadow ministers or shadow cabinet, shadow opposition members, you know, it's, it's still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. that, that I would say. And uh, the reason I asked that particular question too, because from the outside looking in, and being a tri-party opposition members, uh, the community is wondering, are, are you guys getting along together? How has that relationship been so far? I think so far it has been okay. You know, it's, like I say, you know, we, there's no major, major difference in what we're trying to achieve. You know, quite a number, we adjust to a large candidate and for district and their, 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 their district candidates are concentrating heavily in their districts. Mm -hmm. um, the two are large will assist the district candidates in making sure the things like you mentioned, the sewage mm -hmm. and Eastern Long to make sure that that happens. That's the large candidates. The district will continue to bring issues specific to those districts. But, and they also look at the, at the national interests of the country. But we our concentration is to support the district candidates and look at the national issues. Mm. And also too, um, I do know that you know you would have mentioned some of your initial plans, but before we leave, I want you to just give the public some ideas as it relates to some of your intended plans during the rest of your tenure as a leader of opposition. I, I don't know if I, I could call them my plans, but because it, all the, all the issues that are confronting this country must be addressed mostly, 99% by the government. Mm -hmm. But our job is to, is to insist that these things happen. You know, I, I mentioned some of the issues from a business perspective. You know, businesses are, are hurting. They, it seems like um, those, the importers, they have issues with um, customs, their goods are not coming off of the port in a timely manner and based on what the Premier said yesterday, they have issues with caps. Um, but th that been going on for a while now mm -hmm. and, and, and it's, it's going on from last year. So I don't know why it, can't, it couldn't be solved in a, a very quick way. I'll get, get some help because most of these computer systems are in the clouds. You know, I sure there's some system somewhere where you're gonna buy some some backup to assist you while you get your system in place. So the importers are complaining that uh, things are taking too long on the dock. It is true that it seems they facilitate perishable goods, which is good. Um, so we will continue to push to make so business can respond because business businesses are the lifeblood of the economy. We need, especially the smaller business, employ a lot of people, you know, um, and we need people to be employed so that they can feed their family, pay their, their, their taxes back to government, and so forth and so on. Um, banking is an issue in this country. I talked to the minister yesterday, and she has said she will look into these things and she will try to form um, a, a committee to 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 look in and get to the root cause of some of these issues. Because, for example, one of the things I will push is, we have a development bank. The money in the development bank is not the government's money, although the government probably have so, uh, made a deposit recently. Um, but that bank can be used, not breaking any rules, to to really the, 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 the government's national objective f from a financial point of view, if you think on it, get people who can assist you in setting it up, capitalize the bank properly, we probably can use, get a lot more help from that bank because in my former life, you know, back in the national banks in the Caribbean, you know, you go to all Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, they all have national banks and they're doing a lot of stuff in their, in their societies. So we have to use the tools that we have. We have a national bank. The international banks are going to be controlled by the head office overseas. You know, 
So there's, a, there's things that we can do, and that's one of the things I will continue. I, I, I would like to see the bank, uh, the National Bank, take, the, take its next step and take a, a giant step for BBI. All right. And I know you talk about banking just now, but before we go, I want to briefly speak about price gouging in the territory, another major issue <laughs> that persons continue to complain about. From mm -hmm. the opposition side, what can you do to ensure that, you know, systems are put in place to... I, I know, I know for, uh, I know, I, I don't believe if there is a monopoly, the government should regulate it. Okay. I, I believe that the free market system works. It doesn't seem so, but the other way is dangerous because you could have a scarcity of goods. And if you're gonna if you're gonna do price control on goods and and the majority of people feel that they're not making enough return on their investment, they're probably gonna walk away from those goods that the government has put a price control on. So rent, people probably will if it's not feasible, people probably will not build any more apartments. So you'll have a shortage of apartments. Um, but I think the, it, the government, like again, like I mentioned earlier, government needs to find out what is the root cause of some of these issues. Like I mentioned that the, the insurance on, on properties has quadrupled. So that has to be passed on to the customer. So the government uh, needs to set up whatever task force or whatever it is to find out what's the root cause of some of these issues. Right. All the prices of goods went sky high. Transportation, freight cost into the Virgin Islands uh, went from five thousand, six thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars just to freight. The same container of goods. So there, there's some major issues we need. The government needs to confront. And we, again, we sit in opposition. And we will continue to push them. We will continue to keep them on the, on the front burner. That's what we our job is. Uh -huh. So to see if government will be able to to make any decision to to move forward. Uh -huh. And every time they make a decision, we will commend them for making the decision to move forward. But <clears throat> there, a lot of stuff is not under our control as a country. And I think some can we can do some stuff to make it make lives better. And we need to do it. I know you mentioned just now about task force. We've been seeing a number of task force being announced as it relates to being, uh, you know, the, this task force is going to be established. That task force is going to be established. A few weeks afterwards, months afterwards, afterwards, a checkup is had. Task force is yet to be formed. How could we ensure that government is more efficient when it comes to following through on a number of these um, entities, these bodies, these task forces? These these, these yeah, I, um, critical I, establishments that are needed in society. You see, that's what, that's what leadership is all about. Not just to, not just to talk, but to, when you say something, you have the, you have the people around you to make sure it happens. Because it's, it, it is true if the a minister or the premier right, makes a decision during say something like this, a conversation like this, that they would set up a task force to look at accommodation in the country, the uh, cost of accommodation in the country. Then the people, the permanent secretaries, the people behind him should immediately start working to make sure that happens. That's what happens in most democracies. Yeah. And I, I, I do agree with you, there's always you know some one of us making a statement that we're going to do this and we do nothing, you know. I am not a person like that. I, I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, Honorable, any final words you want to leave for the, for the general public? What, what, I was, what I was like about to the general public is that, yes, we, we especially your opposition members, you, you, have, you have heard us articulate what we see the issues that are in the country. And we will continue to work as hard as we possibly can to make sure that 
the government is cognizant of and they become cognizant of these issues and try to do something to fix some of these issues. We want you to continue to, to communicate with us. Let us know what is part of you, the general public, and so we can move your issues to the forefront of what needs to be done in this country. Okay, I want to thank you, yeah. um, Honorable Skeleton, for taking the time of your busy schedule to join us here on Just for the Record. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Our viewers, you would have heard it from the leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition, Honorable Ronnie Skelton, as he would have shared with you his first 100 days in office, as well as a number of the issues that would have been brought to his attention and his plans on holding the government accountable to seeing a number of these issues addressed. But thank you for joining us. Until next time, I'm Kamal Haynes. Bye-bye.